In the O'Leary lab, we are interested in the interaction between light and matter. To explore this interaction, we use a laser and a glass cell filled with gaseous rubidium atoms. We shine the laser through the cell and look at the effect or the absorption and the transmission of this laser as we change the magnetic field around it. The sort of main purpose and inspiration for this lab is to eventually build what's called an atomic magnetometer. Now a regular magnetometer is just something that senses any sort of magnetic field. Um, we're more interested in really small magnetic fields and we're more interested in using atoms to sense these magnetic fields. We use lasers for this. And specifically, we want to use a red color laser because that is the same wavelength that we want to use for these transitions within our rubidium. So we have a power source and it excites these atoms within um, our medium. And what that does is it produces this light that's all coherent or in phase with each other. And then we let that light escape through a little hole and that's basically how our lasers work. And so we can change some things like the uh, voltage that's being applied or the temperature and that will change the color of our laser so that we can study how different kinds of colors or wavelengths are going to affect these transitions within the rubidium. So a really interesting thing about the particular laser that we're using is that it's one with a lot of inherent noise in it, where the color or frequency jitters very rapidly. This means that when the laser being passed through the magnetic field affecting the rubidium cell, we actually see changes in the noise that we would not otherwise normally be able to see without this inherent frequency jitter. The interaction that we're looking at is called EIT, Electromagnetically Induced Transparency, or EIT for short, and it's a quantum mechanical interference phenomenon. So what's neat about it is it's like how Bose noise canceling headphones work. Um, that's a destructive interference process. So what happens within the atoms is that light interacts with the atoms and causes this interference within the atom itself such that the light can go through when without this it would have been stopped. So I like to say that the wall, that's the atoms, becomes a window and lets the light through. On top of that there's an even more sensitive interaction that has to do with how noise inherent in the laser, so a color flicker, becomes converted into an intensity flicker. And this flickering is associated with the EIT and it's very, very sensitive magnetic field. And so, and not well understood, this conversion process of this flickering, intensity flickering, it's not well understood and uh, really, really interesting. And so just the physics of it is really fun to look at and then we have the technical application to really motivate us to go forward. Physics is not something that's just done that you can learn in a textbook. It's um, something we learn about every day I think it's really important for undergrads who are getting a physics degree to realize that there's this sense of discovery. There are things that we can do in the lab here at Lewis and Clark that no one has ever seen before in the entire world. Um, and so my students are my collaborators and uh, we are working together to find out brand new things about how light and matter interact and hopefully these can be then used to better humanity.